Hey everybody, it's your radio pal Wes Nesman. I guess I got a little story for you. I didn't think this one was that much worth telling, but I saw somebody telling the story wrong, so I'll tell you what I know. Oh, uh, a long time ago, there was this band known as Dokken, as in you're rocking with Dokken. Now, what I can't remember is if it was during one of their headline shows or if they were opening for Judas Priest. It was one or the other. I cannot remember. But I went and saw them at their show, and to be quite honest, even though I really liked the band at the time, I was kind of more excited that in a small club called Abbey Road, uh, Wendy O. Williams from the Plasmatics was playing there. Wendy O. Williams was a legendary punk figure. Um, I don't know how to bring up her appearance in a nice way. Uh, she had a body that looked like it was carved out of a fantasy. I'm, her body was amazing. But she had distorted the rest of her looks. Whether she did it intentionally or she just wasn't, I, I don't know, traditionally pretty or something, I don't know. But she had a, a blonde mohawk and the side of her hair was black here. And she would always wear too much mascara. And uh, when she played Abbey Road, I remember I remember exactly what she was wearing. She was wearing panties, a very big belt, almost like a weightlifting belt or something like that. And she was wearing a crop top tee that was cut off right below the nipples. It was like she had, I don't know if the tensile strength, is tensile the right word? I don't know. If it was the strength of her nipples that held that top down, or if she actually had some uh, primordial fabric body paste that held it down. But during the whole show, you're going, any minute now, I'm going to see some action. And, and you never did. But anyways, I went to this show over at Abbey Road, and I went to the bar to get a pitcher of beer because that's how we drank in the old days. We didn't fool around with cups of beer, no. And I turn around from uh, getting a pitcher of beer, and George Lynch of Dockin is right behind me and uh, I just told the bartender give me another cup and I said I said let's go to the front and see George don't even know me at this point he, uh, and, and he goes why and I said because that's where you'd want people if it was you on stage and he goes good point so me and George Lynch of Doc and go to the front and we're pounding beer right there watching Wendy L. Williams show about two people back and that's what was amazing to me is, is there were people up against the stage, and you got to remember, there were no barriers in those days. There were no security people. These people were about, the stage was about, well, I don't know, knee high to these people. And these guys are like trying to grab Wendy and stuff. And the most amazing thing is, is Wendy would take her microphone, and I don't know if you know how heavy one of these is, but they're heavy. Wendy would take her microphone, and when they try to grab her boobs or whatever, she'd go, pow, and hit them right on top of the head. And they're heavy. That would be like getting hit with a, a dildo full of nickels, man. Because I'm amazed that there weren't people bleeding from the head, or they, they might have been. But anyways, it was just really amazing. And I'm just chilling with the dude from Doc, and, and we're watching this punk rock show at Abbey Road. And later we went back to the hotel room and partied the rest of the night. But that's what was up with Wendy O. Williams. May she rest in peace. And George, we'll party again someday.